Hey, Dave here with another video to talk about surviving storms in life. You see, life has storms. Yeah, no surprise there. Some storms in life are greater than others. Perhaps you are in a storm right now as I speak. Often we might struggle to get through a storm because we are unprepared. It's funny how people like to be stuck in a mess inside of turmoil because it is what they can see. It is what is around them that they visually see. When there is an opportunity for protection in the spiritual realm, such as what the Lord Jesus can offer, we can push it aside. Sometimes we do that. We become accustomed to accepting the bad habits when we're thinking it's normal. But when something goes wrong, we call out for help. And when that help arrives, we ignore it. We ignore it again and again. We see the help and we think we can do better. But then why do we call for help? Let's take a look at Matthew chapter 14, verse 29 through 31. And I'll read Matthew chapter 14, verse 29 through 31. And it says, And he said, Come. And when Peter came down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cries, saying to the Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And that is in Matthew chapter 14, I should say, Matthew chapter 14, verse 29 through 31. After walking on the water for a short while near Christ, you see Peter started sinking. There were specific reasons for this. Peter still had the Peter temperament, the impulsive Pete, who always followed his feelings and emotions to dictate him. Peter was rewarded for his actions. He began to walk to Jesus on the water. The Bible doesn't tell us how far he walked. We don't know if it was two feet, 10 feet, or a thousand feet, but we know it was far enough that everyone in the, in the boat knew Peter was on top of the Sea of Galilee. They also watched him long enough to see him take his eyes off of Jesus and look at the storm around him. That means he looked at the situation around him and took his eyes off Jesus. The situation distracted Peter from Jesus. When he did, he began to sink. Peter started sinking in familiar waters, but overconfidence caused carelessness. Think about that. Overconfidence caused carelessness. We should never pride ourselves on our own strength and experience. Remember, it ain't all about us. Jesus said to Peter, come, in verse 29. He was not on the road of intended disobedience. He wasn't, but responded positively to Christ's invitation. How many times have we been invited? We can always fail, even on our own path that the Lord put us on. It can happen. We must get back on the path that the Lord intended us on to be on. This is called repentance. When we get back on the road, God put us on. Those who stand must be careful not to fall and should therefore watch and pray. Watch and pray. I'll say that again. Those who stand must be careful not to fall and should therefore watch and pray. Two words are important, to watch and to pray. To watch means to be discerning. To pray means to be with the Lord in private communication. Watching and praying means to be discerning of what is around you and to be guided by the Lord's protective hand. It's a way of keeping your eye on Jesus, just as Peter had started to do, but failed to continue. See, he failed to continue. That means to be in a space of protection in front of the Lord and with the Lord. Remember, Peter sank when he looked away from Jesus. 
We sing too when we look away from Jesus. That means we are not watching and praying. Peter saw only the waves and threatening dangers around him, and his faith failed him. When Peter's situation distracted him from Jesus, that is when he started to sink. We sink too for the same reason. But Jesus' helping hand was already there to save Peter. Jesus' helping hand is already there to save us too. Hold on to the courage of your faith, your faith in Jesus, and keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. That faith you hold on to is the helping hand of the Lord. Don't let it go. We can learn a lot from this story. Jesus talks to them, the people in the boat, when he gets onto the when he gets into the boat about their faith, so that we must exercise our faith in him. He teaches us that. But we do that by remembering this story. If we are to be true disciples of Jesus, we must do what he did. We need to be willing to step out of our comfort zone into the unknown areas of life sometimes. But be discerning when you do that. Pray when you do that. Recognize that when we do, if we keep our eyes on Jesus, we do not need to sink under the waves. We just need to remember who to focus on and not the circumstances around us. We don't need to worry about the storms around us. Jesus is here. He says, lift up your eyes and look at him. It will be okay. He will rescue you from the storm. When the storms do seem to swallow you up, remember you have one who can rescue you from what seems to be like an ocean of problems, distress, frustration, or fear. When we call on him, he is ready to reach out his hand and pull us free from the things that keep us from our peace. That's what Jesus is there for. The legacy of Jesus is peace. He may not take us out of the storm, but he gives us the assurance of his presence and his peace. May you be blessed. I pray that you are discerning. I pray that you pray also. I pray that you keep your eyes on Jesus. My name is Dave.